That's what we want, right? Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, going into the next talk now, which is Josh Henley from Dave Wales team in Welsh Government. Uh, so over to you, Josh. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yep, Orada Pau, I'm Josh Henley. I'm a member of the Daymap Wales team from Welsh Government. Not here at the back. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm here today to talk to you about the uh, engagement tool that we've developed for Daymap Wales, uh, hence the funny title, You're So Spatial, Let's Get Engaged. Thank you, Tom, for that one. Uh, Uh, cool, right here. Uh, so, if you're not familiar with Datemap Wales, it's basically what it says on the tin, so it's data on maps in Wales. Uh, we've got lots of <clears throat> different types of data on there, from open government license data, PSGA data, uh, to really quite locked down, restricted sort of data sets, like um, related to vulnerable households, for use with Jigsaw app, uh, to allow new suppliers, some new responders to yeah, plan evacuations, that kind of thing. So, like I say, uh, today I'll be talking about the engagement tool. So, we'll have a quick look at the timeline, uh, developments carried out so far on the tool itself, and some future developments before closing remarks and key takeaways of the brief uh, QA that we're a little bit behind on time. So, I'll try to close some time back as I go along. As you can see, there's a QR code on the screen there, so feel free to scan the QR code or you can use the URL just beneath datamap.gov.wales slash survey slash possible G travel. Um, and that's just a link there to the survey tool itself. Uh, so you can just get a little quick taster. Um, I'll show that in a moment, so I'll give you a chance just to scan that if you like to follow along. And what you should see there then is the uh, engagement tool on Datamap Wales. So it's just a quick survey just to tell us where you've come from today and how you got here. So very simply, um, scan, hand zoom to your locality and just stick a pin on the map there Oops. and indicate how you got here today just to give you uh, some familiarity with the engagement tool. Um, See there if I hit submit now. Yeah. Got my response submitted. I can start another response if needs be. I will take a little bit more uh, look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Cool. I think Tom has done a little bit of work to set up um, a workbench, maybe, maybe not, <laughs> uh, to uh, reveal the results of that survey. So um, I'll give him a chance. Maybe at the end we'll have a look and see if those uh, responses have come through and we can take a look at those as a spatial layer on Datemap Wales. So you yeah, carry on then. So in terms of the timeline for the engagement tool, uh, it all started way back in uh, middle of 2021. Uh, we were approached by the active travel team in Welsh Government. Um, active travel team from across local authorities in Wales wanted to um, go out to the public to carry out consultations on active travel schemes and they were using uh, a platform commonplace and we were approached to create embedded maps uh, as iframes so that they could embed those within this commonplace tool we sort of noticed then the, the limitations in that which which was the uh, the start of us deciding to do a discovery uh, on our offering for the engagement tool uh, so that we could uh, do it all ourselves really. Um, so the first iteration really before that came with National Forest. So National Forest uh, policy team approached us to conduct um, a survey of the public across Wales so that we could collect responses about where users across Wales, members of the public, would want to see trees planted uh, in their area and it gathered a bit more information. Obviously we had no um, contact with this at the time so we 
uh, and to do it all from scratch, uh, making use of Django. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail shortly. Um, we move on then to the second sort of iteration. We've engaged with Cadu recently, so we started last year, I think. Uh, long journey, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so yeah, further improvements came with uh, Cadu and things around sort of validations to ensure the accuracy of the data. Again, we'll look at that in a bit more detail. And that takes us through to summer 2023 uh, now, where we've had some further improvements in terms of automating response layers. We might see later. Uh, and look into the future. Uh, again, have to travel with and talk with to talk about further developments. We've been approached recently uh, by, I think, Chuckle for Wales, uh, to talk about sort of EV charging infrastructure, that kind of thing. So lots of discussions going on and lots of use for the tool. So uh, pre-engagement, um, or pre the development of this engagement tool, like I say, we were um, creating these embedded maps for active travel so that they could uh, embed these on commonplace. So it allowed for sort of a table of contents and feature information panel to display, but uh, there were limitations, so you couldn't change base maps on there, uh, couldn't display overlay layers, and couldn't interact with those overlay layers, so you couldn't select, say, a feature on the map or drop a pin, uh, and you couldn't sort of pull attribute information or what have you as part of a response. So it was really just uh, there for displaying information, uh, spatial information, and then they were collecting responses using standard sort of question types. Um, so we, we did some uh, I guess, text bike and looked into the use of uh, Django, uh, an open source data package that we could um, start to build our own engagement tool. Um, so that was using Django form surveys and see what was available out of the box and how we could customize that and, and build on it really to make improvements. So we were approached then by National Forest and that gave us the chance to um, implement the Django uh, form service module and start to build our engagement tool. Um, their only sort of real requirements was to be able to drop a pin on a map so you could capture coordinates, but there are no sort of constraints on there in terms of uh, validations. So we did get some data from users, almost like protest votes, if you like, um, from users who dropped pins in the Irish Sea um, or over the border in England. Um, it gave us some sort of basic question types, uh, radio buttons, drop downs, that kind of thing. Uh, you can see on the screenshot there, you've got um, brief description, and uh, in some checkboxes. Um, we display layers, so you can see in the corner of that picture there, you've got uh, the table of contents button, uh, but couldn't interact with layers. It was a few only, so we couldn't select features still. Uh, and that was our first sort of real um, chance to carry out an engagement. So we've got about 1,458 responses on that survey. Um, quite a long time period, really. Um, it was a really successful uh, engagement and um, it gave us a chance to, to try it out really. Fast forward into sort of the last year or so then, uh, we um, started liaising with CADU. Um, and this is our second sort of attempt to make some improvements to the engagement tool. So we introduced validations. Um, so validations on the zoom level, so users are forced to zoom to uh, a certain zoom level, uh, a certain scale to ensure uh, greater accuracy. We introduced layer validations to ensure that uh, features from the map could be selected. And also introduced feature validations so that you could specify uh, specific features from a layer had to be selected. So, for example, uh, if you're looking at properties, then you could define that there has to be a resident residential property type. Um, we also introduced um, feature information question types so that you can pull through information as part of a response. So when you select a feature on a map, it will pre-populate fields. Um, we've done some work recently to introduce an image uploader uh, as well as a locate me prompt uh, to sort of make it a bit easier for users to uh, get to the location. I share my screen, take a look at the 
condition monitoring format. Um, so this is in draft at the moment, as you can tell by the sort of placeholder text there. But this will give you an idea of the sort of um, functionality that's been developed for Cadu. So as you can see, you've got your embedded map there. And if I oops, select a point on the map, very far away, it's going to tell me I need to zoom in before selecting central monuments. So that uh, text is also configurable. And if I head to a, an area, so we've actually done some work on the um, search hazards here, configs, make sure that uh, features from specific layers can be pulled through to there. So if I start typing in one of the scheduled monuments, it'll bring that up. So users can search by scheduled monument ID or name. If I select middle of nowhere, it's having I need to select a scheduled monument. So obviously I'm past that zoom level validated, but I've not clicked on an actual feature. And when I do select a feature properly, it's telling me that I've selected my location. And it's pre-populated with all those fields there, so you can ensure that accuracy there. Um, we've specified that you have mandatory fields, again, uh, to ensure uh, great accuracy um, with the data, and a date widget pickers, date picker widgets, rather, uh, and the image uploader there. And all of that, like I say, uh, increases the uh, accuracy of the data that we are uh, encouraging users to uh, flow for us. We've also done some work to automate this process of generating survey responses as a spatial layer. So we've been using FME uh, desktop to create workbenches to automate that process and then use an FME server to, to run that on a schedule. Um, and I think we're going to do some work in the future to improve that further so that it's run whenever a submission is uh, put in, rather than just being run on a, a time schedule. Uh, we've also had to do some work there to sort of format the feature information nicely. So like I say, uh, this is generating uh, a layer, which is available then on the MF Wales for users to, to go into and export if need be. Um, some work was done to uh, make the read-only feature information panel that pops up when you select a feature on the map. Oops. Um, to format them more nicely. So prior to this, I think the images were only displayed as URLs. Um, and so the challenges around pick lists and checkboxes and that's been manipulated so the data displayed correctly. Um, so we've got about 25 surveys we've done so far. Um, some uh, choice ones we've got there, sort of a, a bridge end actual travel survey we're approached to do. So we had about 221 users who visited that survey in 226 responses. Um, I think because there was a prize incentive on offer from Bridgend, I think a tablet, um, there was a, a great incentive for users to submit and submit multiple responses perhaps. Uh, we've recently done a digital inclusion survey, so allowing uh, public sector bodies to tell us about their digital inclusion offering. Uh, we had about 113 users there, 188 responses, Possibly some duplication, but a lot of it, I think, down to users um, providing information for multiple libraries, say, within their county. Um, so, in terms of the future, we are going to be looking at a moderation process for approving survey responses um, so that they can then be made publicly available. Uh, so, like I say, Chocolate Wells have approached us, and that's something that they're interested in. Um, so that's what we've been asked for is a map per question rather than a map per survey. So I think after travel have raised this a couple of times where they'd like to be able to ask users to uh, stick a pen on a map where they want to see benches, say along an active travel route, and they also want to get locations for say, drop curves, that kind of thing. And it'd be nice to be able to display multiple maps within that uh, one survey rather than having lots of surveys to capture all that information. Uh, the validation models we've used um, are being reused across the site. So uh, for more sort of general data collection on the map, so we've used the same sort of validations when users are now editing data on the map. We've made some improvements there. Um, so non-GIS users um, who aren't used to editing data in tables and sort of a, in the feature grid on the map there. We've simplified that process now that so that 
they can go into edit mode, select a feature, and then they're presented with form fields, uh, and some validations can be used for that as part of some work we've done for uh, land-based decarbonisation. And we've also looked at allowing users to capture lines or polygons as part of service. So previously, it's only been possible to uh, drop a pin or uh, create a points feature. Um, which uh, now go forward, I think we'll be able to capture lines or polygons as part of survey responses. Uh, like I say, Parallel have been improving the data editing at Data Lab Wales. Um, and you can see there now the what was formerly always a, a read only uh, feature in the panel. Is now editable, so when you go into edit mode, you can present these form fields, and it's possible to use widgets, um, drop downs, and uh, checkboxes, etc., to uh, edit feature information uh, through forms by the map uh, on Map Store. So, which uh, gives us more flexibility going forward. So, it might be that the survey tool is more predominantly used for uh, mobile sort of surveys, this is more used for perhaps. Uh, so the editable feature information is more used for internal or desktop based exercises. Um, the maps are more suited to sort of complex uh, data collection and simpler fields, whereas the surveys are better for, for complex uh, fields and less complex maps. Uh, and in the future, it might be that the two merge so the surveys don't sit on Django pages but are integrated more into the map store, which is an ambition uh, for us really to sort of do it all. Through our one stop map. Uh, so, yeah, basically, in summary, it's, it's, it's all about um, engaging with users and collecting accurate data, um, accurate spatial data. And um, to that end, we've introduced uh, validations, the mapping elements, obviously, uh, <coughs> pre camera responses to, to ensure that that's uh, possible. DL Val. How? Oh, we do have one last survey you can see there. So um, it's the Fossil G pin the pub. Obviously, uh, if you get a chance over lunch to stretch your legs, go for a walk, you might want to scope out the pub that is uh, booked for later on. I think it's called Beerith. Beerith. Um, so if you scan the survey there, I'll just see if I've got it available as well. So again, uh, so if you, you've got a few different uh, validators on here, so if I zoom right out, you can see there's a validation to tell that's not a building. Um, I think this is the venue we're in. If I zoom right in there. I have to ignore the success message and scroll down a wee bit to see that your answer is wrong. Uh, this is the conference venue, and you're about 374 meters from the venue. We'll see who can, um, who can get the... <laughs> Correct answer at first, perhaps, uh, and there is an image uploaded there, so you can get take a picture of the pub. We'll, we'll see who um, <laughs> gets the right answer first. Uh, so yeah, deal with our pad. Um, if there are any questions? Um, I have to say it was on. Oh, brilliant! So the uh, Tom just told me the responses to the travel survey should be there now. Well, so we've got a good spread. Um, I'll just play this in the full map. Cool, so we've got um, myself from North Wales here. We've got a few from over the border, Plymouth. Just like that feature, we can see that they come by train. Obviously, we've got a format of this. Uh, quite a few users coming by train today. So yeah, a really nice way of visualizing that data, and um, you can see then got a few from Swansea, quite a few from Cardiff as well. Um, yeah, good, good job. Uh, any questions before I finish? Responses. <laughs> Are we handed over to yeah. I'll let you know. Thanks very much, Josh. It was a really interesting talk. Completely unbiased opinion, but the, the tool and the whole data map Wales platform just does look really good. Um, 
next up, we have Daniel Cluley from the Plymouth Marine Laboratory on building the Welsh data cube, which fits in quite nicely with Paul mentioning it as part of his session a bit earlier, all the Earth observation data. So we'll find out more about that any second now. Over to you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me like this? Or don't you? Is this good? Cool. Um, 